what's good youtube is your man bg tech life and today i want to talk about some of the settings that's on my pixel 7a that's giving me a really good performance out of this device so it's going to be like kind of like a tips and tricks video so let's get into it okay youtube if you've been following my series about the pixel 7a and everything that's going on with android 14 i actually want to take this video and kind of like go through the settings some of the settings i like some of the settings i don't like some of the things that i change up to get the best performance out of my pixel and hopefully you guys maybe make your pixel perform better after watching this video or maybe you can also let me know some tips that you know that i didn't cover man you can leave them down in the comments okay so this is going to be a very simple video guys first and foremost we're just going to open up the settings and we're going to basically work through the settings together as a team and i'm going to show you some of the things that's going on with my device and some things that i like so let's just start off with network and internet because network is a big part of the performance of your device the thermals of your device and the speed that you know the internet speeds that you get and what I'm currently, what my phone is currently set on, I'm on a 5G network, but I'm also on Wi-Fi. But if you go down to the bottom, adaptive connectivity, I have that turned on. And this has been working really well for me since I've been on Android 14 and 13, honestly. Um, basically, this extends your battery life and improved device performance by automatically managing your network connections. And at first, back in the day, maybe a while ago, Pixel 6 time, this was not optimized. I had to cut this off because it was doing too much adjusting of the network and had the phone searching for too many signals and it was kind of like burning the phone out for no reason. But now it seems to be very fluid. I've had this on, I'm between 5G and Wi-Fi and it's been working seamlessly and the device has been keeping a really good signal. So I would suggest that you keep this on. Okay, so let's get into the next thing guys. Now battery. Battery is big for everybody. I've been getting really good battery life on my Pixel 7a, especially since I've joined the Android 14 beta program onto the official Android 14. One thing for sure, two things for certain. One thing I should, I think you should always keep on, keep your battery percentage on. As you can see, if I toggle this, the battery percentage up in the corner goes off. It's no number. It's just the battery. I think it's way better to track your battery percentage with an actual number so you exact because it's important that you know how much battery you have left especially if you're in a situation where you might have to go without a charger or you need to know how, exactly how long your battery gonna last i would cut the percentage number on at all times now for some of us that's going to be keeping our pixels longer i would suggest that you use this especially if you're in a situation you're not always in a battery stress situation to get the most out of your device this is more about longevity for your device guys you go to adaptive charging you keep that on to help extend battery lifespan your phone learns your charging routine and waits until you need it to fully charge a adaptive charging is about actually making the battery on your pixel last longer if you're going to be a user of this device for a couple years let's say you want to keep it for some people keep their devices up to three years and things of that nature and if you're going to use it for a long period of time you want to you want to keep the battery health as good as you can if it doesn't bother you to use of that charging i say go ahead and use it because it's going to keep your phone healthier in the long run this is for my folks that's always in crunch time with that battery as you can see i don't have this mode on because I'm basically always around the charger, but um, this is battery saver and not the extreme battery saver when you get down to 5%, but they do have a battery saver that limits visual effects and background activity uh, like app updates, turn on dark mode if not already. And that's a secret guys, the dark wallpapers like black wallpapers and dark mode use less pixels in the screen of the device or it doesn't task the screen as much, therefore it doesn't task the battery as much. So that's just also a tip. That's why a lot of people say use a black wallpaper. But if you're in a situation where you're not using your device heavy, and you just want the best of the battery life and you need your phone to last all day because you can cut this on and cut it off as you need it i would really just cut it on like maybe if i'm busy and i'm doing things and i can't be on my phone i keep it in this mode so my phone is just not doing a lot in the background burning the battery it's actually saving the battery while i'm not using it and then when i want to use my device i can kick it on and have my fun or whatever but that's just a little tip the standard battery saving mode extreme is a little extreme so I wouldn't use that, you know, that's just basically for if you got 5% left and you 
stranded in the wilderness somewhere. Now we're going to display. It's one thing in display that's really big, guys, that I uh, like to use on this device. And I will say the biggest thing right now is the smooth display. That's when you take your device from 60 hertz to 90 hertz. That's when you get the best look, the best scroll on your Instagram feed or your Twitter feed. The best look when you game it. 90 hertz is really good for gaming. You know, a lot of phones, the flagship phones use 120, but 90 is definitely still a nice experience on this display. So I would say cut 90 hertz on. 90 hertz does test the battery just a smidge a bit more, but all my battery tests and everything I've been doing with this device and the good performance that I've been getting, it's still been able to get it with the 90 hertz on. So I really wouldn't worry about it too much. If you want a good experience with your Pixel, I would definitely cut that on because you want to use your phone you want to enjoy one of the good things about having a pixel 7a from a pixel 6a is you get a 90 hertz display so definitely something that you want to cut on and try out and just experience the smoothness and see if you can notice a difference especially if you game on this device there are also other settings like you can go up to colors and basically this actually sets how your display looks you can have a natural color which is less saturated let me try to click that this is less saturated if you want your display and your screen and whatever you watch to be less saturated and look more like real life and then they have adaptive and i feel like that's more saturated i like more saturated things because honestly i'm kind of like a samsung fanboy a little bit and i've just been loving all the saturation over the years so i definitely leave mine and adapt it so it can get more saturated and the colors will pop a little harder another tip guys if you want your device to work seamlessly and a little bit more like almost sped up with the animations another thing you can do is go to, to about phone and you're gonna slide all the way down guys i went to about phone i slid all the way down because you know there's a lot of personal information in this part but you go to build number and you click that about five times you can see my phone is already in developer mode so i can get the developer options but once you you click this five times you'll get developer options now that i enable developer options i can actually go to system i can go down to developer options and what you're going to do is scroll down and it's going to be a little far down but it's going to say uh window transition animations and things of that nature it's going to talk about animations and we're going to want to change that so hold on i'm trying to show you okay boom we got window animation scale we want to change the transition animation and the window animation now as you can see they're on one actually and you could click on that and you could put it on 0.5 and then transition animation 0.5 and it will actually speed up the time that the animations happen and it make your phone feel way more fluid than it already is i definitely like that i usually have that already set on my devices but i had uh, master reset this device is for the update. I didn't put that on yet, but yeah, window animation scale and transition animation scale. You put it to 0.5, and things just seem a lot more fluid. As you can see, when I went back, it just seemed like double time. This is a little trick, guys. I haven't had to do it. I haven't had any problems with the under display fingerprint scanner, but on this device, and I've done it on previous devices, you can actually add the same fingerprint twice, and that just doubles the amount of scans that the device has. For a certain finger so you can get that flawless fingerprint unlock it speeds it up it's just got you know it's just a little trick of the trade right here guys i haven't had any issues but sometimes it's just cool to do so as you can see i'm just adding my thumb it was all my thumb is already in there but it's just letting me add it again getting more scans and that way you know my under display fingerprint scanner be more seamless than it already is but this is my bg tech life and these just were some simple tips and tricks that I wanted to share with y'all so you can have a better quality of use with your Pixel 7a. If this helped you, make sure you subscribe and hit, hit the like button. And if you got any tips that I should add, go ahead and leave it down in the comment section. It's your boy BG Tech Life. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Peace.